Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Sonia. Today I am going to be moving from my first bullet journal of the year to my second bullet journal of the year. And if that interests you, then go ahead and keep on watching. So I will be using these Tombow brush pens, the N52, the N65, and the N60. I did not end up using the black. I also am using these Micron pens, the 01, the 03, and the 05 nib, which I love using. And I will also be using some regular tape and a double-sided tape, which I will be showing in just a minute. There it is. And I will also be using a ruler from Erin Condren, a white jelly roll, and some correction tape from Tombow because I do make a lot of mistakes, and a pencil and an eraser that I took from my daughter, and she kind of let me have it, so. And then I have some vellum from Crescent Planner, a journaling card, and a bunch of scrap black paper. I also didn't feel like hand lettering, so I used my paper cutter and just um, typed some words up and cut them out. So going into my cover, I have this journaling card that I got from Planner Perfect. I really liked the girl. I feel like she had a lot of flowers. And then I also put in a pocket to put a picture of my kids in to make it more personalized. I wanted to add the black paper in the journaling card onto that paper. I want to permanently put the black paper in there because I do like black and it feels weird not to have black into my planner. So I decided to do that and I will just be cutting off the corners right there as you can see and I will just be permanently um, double sided taping it. So this is my first voiceover so bear with me. Um, I am a little nervous and I hope I do this correctly, but I wanted to give this a shot and see how you guys like it. If you guys do like it, let me know by liking this video or commenting down below. And that would be very much appreciated because my, your guys' feedback does mean a lot to me. So here I am gluing, glu the <laughs> gluing everything down so that way I can have that ready to go. And I am just putting in this journaling card. It is from Shop Jessica Hearts. I don't think she has this anymore because it was a freebie that came with my order. And because I don't want this to be permanently in there, I will be using some washing tape to put it in there. There it is. And I will be using this vellum, which I have in my other planner which I will be showing you right now. I really love the way it looks, so I will be putting it into this bullet journal as well. I'm considering putting it in all of my bullet journals. We'll see, but right now I just really like the way it looks. So for those of you who don't know, um, in order to do a tip in, all you do is grab some tape and a card and Dakshina does this a lot better, which I will link her video down below, but you just kind of line it up to where you want it, and I do this very poorly. I made a lot of mistakes trying to do this. Um, I've only done this a handful of times, so hopefully with time I will get better, but you just kind of lay it in there and then just smooth it out. I did not do a good job of smoothing it out, as you can see. And I will just be spending time trying to fix it, so bear with me on that. Okay, now I will be putting in the bottom part of the tape. Hopefully this comes down a little bit better and a lot more smoothly. And then I do it in the back as well. I think I put two pieces of tape back there because I want to make sure that it is secure on each side. And then I move my journaling card to make sure that the tape doesn't stick on it because like I said, I do not want that journaling card to be there permanently. So I just kind of move it out of the way. I probably should have done the tape first before putting down the journaling card, but oh well. So there it is, it looks so pretty. I love the way that looks and it is ready to go. So going on to the next page, 
I really don't see the use of this, so I will end up taping it. It's just like this weird funky page that has like a glue, like the way it's glued in for the binding. I don't know, but I just put some double sided tape and just kind of put it together. So there we go. It looks so much better. So as you can see, I did want to draw in my letters, but like I said, I got really lazy. So instead I will be getting my cutouts and some black cardstock that I have ripped up to give myself a different background. Okay, so I have my 2021 lettering and the black paper that I ripped up and I am just trying to find where I want to place it. I end up placing it more in the middle just because I like it better there. So you guys will see me, you know, taping it in and just placing it there. So now I will be taking my Tombow N60, which is kind of like a purpley color, and I am writing continues right under the 2021. I ended up not liking it because I started running out of room and I just didn't plan ahead on this. So what I end up doing is I take out the 2021 and I just cover it up with that. And I go with the other idea that I had, which is putting part two at the bottom, which I have cut up. It's honestly not my favorite, but it does work and it does cover it up, so I am okay with that. Honestly, I am not as picky with my second bullet journal as I was with my first one. I end up actually making a lot of mistakes in this one. I think part of it was because I was very nervous filming this since it is the first time that I have filmed a setup video of my bullet journal. And it is hard to not try to want to be perfect when you make your bullet journals, especially on camera. So I just kind of go with it throughout the process. And as you can see, I keep trying to fix my um, letters because I keep making it perfect. I mean, keep trying to make it straight. And then I just add some black grid washi tape to the top and bottom because obviously I do not have enough black in my planner. And then I'm just erasing all the pencil marks that I had before and I am ready to go. So there we go with that. I am also going to be taking out this calendar of the 2021 at a glance that I got from Planner Monkey Co. It is a printable and I wanted to put it there because it does have my daughter's school schedule as well as holidays and birthdays and I do refer to it a lot. So that is my front spread. Going into my next spread is my grid spacing. Um, I don't really like the way this turned out too much when I um, highlighted the lines, which you will see later. But for right now, I am just numbering the top and the bottom so I know that how many spaces are going across and how many spaces are going down. I did do the um, one half, one third, one fourth on my other bullet journal, but I don't feel like I really need the third and fourth because I can just use my calculator. Honestly, I just need to know how many spaces are going across and down, and that's really all I need. I tend to um, experiment a lot with different types of sizes. Uh, as like boxes and stuff on my planner. So I'm just going to stick to this and see how it goes and see if I even need it. So if you're not familiar, the Lloyd's term is 26 across and 37 down. And I'm just taking my Micron 01 and my ruler and I am just going to be going down the middle which is in between the 13 and the 14 and then going across which is in between the 19 and 20 because the way it is kind of odd numbered so I just kind of fit it right there and then I'm going to be grabbing my 
words that I have um, pre-cut so that way I can put it into my bullet journal. And I am just ripping up some paper and trying to figure out how I want to layer it. I have really been getting into the ripped up paper look. I'm sure you guys can tell by all of my past spreads, but I feel like it adds a lot of character to my bullet journal and I am just going to go with whatever I am enjoying. So here that is. I really like the background that the ripped paper gives to the letters. I feel like it just kind of adds a little bit more like a standout look to it. So I am just going to put that in there with the double sided tape and there we go with that. Next I am just going to erase all the numbers that I wrote down just to kind of you know, erase it and give it a clean look, but I will be highlighting the lines, which I really did not like. I first started off making it crooked, which you will see, and then I will just be getting my ruler to kind of draw a straighter line because I like my straight lines. So there you see me doing that. And I honestly kind of regret doing this, but you know, honestly, it is what it is. Um, I'm only going to be in this bullet journal for like, what, like five months. So it's no big deal. It's just for reference. So as long as it's function functional, right? So going into my next side is my weekly schedule. I really, really love this layout. I used it a ton in my last bullet journal because I am very forgetful. I need to remember what tasks I need to put in my dailies. So going back at this is very helpful for me. So as you can see, I am doing what I've been doing with my other spreads, which is putting down this black cardstock and then putting the words on top of it. I really love the way it looks and just kind of gives it the effect. But before I put that down, I realized that I actually need to put in my um, headers for my days because I do tend to run out of space and it would make it really hard for me to do the headers after putting down that cardstock because the cardstock is kind of in the way of the headers. So you'll just kind of see me using different colors and of course I mess up because I wanted to alternate my markers with the purple, the blue tone, and the dark gray. So I just kind of go over the purple with the blue and I just kind of go down the row. And you will see me counting down each row. Uh, I put seven lines in each day so I have all that extra space. And I just wanted to make sure that I didn't make any more mistakes because I felt like I kept making mistakes, which was really frustrating. So you'll just kind of see me counting down as I get everything all set up. But luckily, no more mistakes were done and I was able to put the title onto my spread. And then I just take my, I believe, 03 and I start writing in the days of the week. I start with Monday and I go across for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then I'm just taking my ruler and the um, zero 01 micron and I'm just drawing out my lines because like I said, I do love my straight lines. So I tend to use my ruler a lot in my bullet journal when I'm doing any type of setup, whether it's my like yearly setup, I guess you call it like, you know, the start of a new bullet journal, my monthly and my weekly setups. Okay, so I had a pause for a minute to go do something, but now I am back doing my future log. And as you can see, I did originally want to hand letter what I was going to do for my Word future log, and I decided to go the cutout 
text route. So as you can see, I'm just kind of figuring out how I want to do things. And I did need to move my boxes down all the way to the bottom. And I am using, I believe it's an 03 or an 05. I don't remember exactly. And I am just counting and putting my boxes in their new places. Luckily, since I only did this in pencil to begin with, I was able to fix everything and move it into the place that I wanted it to. And then I'm adding these lines at the end because I do like the look of that better. And then I am going to go ahead and start putting in my dates. And as you can see, I accidentally started at Monday. I like to have my future log calendars at a Sunday start as well as my monthly calendars. But when I do my weeklies, I start on a Monday and that's what kind of threw me off. So the reason why I do Monday start on my weeklies is I don't like not highlighting one number or just having one number off. So that is why I do Monday start on my weeklies. And I am now using a Micron 03 for thicker letters. The Micron that I actually used for my boxes and my Monday, my Saturday through, actually sorry, my Sunday through Saturday was my 01. So there you have it. And later I will be kind of skipping over little bits and parts so that we don't drag this video for too long. So you will see that I am highlighting my um, weekdays with alternative colors like I did on the other one and I am doing it on the other side. See how I skipped over? So that way you guys aren't just watching this over and over again. And now I am just erasing everything so that I can put my new headers on. And I didn't think about this before, but it is going to make my planner very bulky doing all this paper, especially when at the top. I do have a lot of headers at the top and I don't know if it's going to bug me or not, but we will see. Okay, and there we have my future log. Going on to the next page is my YouTube tracker and calendar. I love having this. I used it in my last spread and it worked out just perfectly. So I can do a video of how I do it, but basically what I do is I put on like sticky notes or like the page flags of videos I want to film in that month. And then when I am done filming, I just permanently write in the date and the video that I filmed. That way I know what I've filmed already and what I haven't. So I have six boxes that I am making for April through September, I believe. And I am just going to go ahead and put the title of the YouTube tracker on top. And then I want to have the other side for my ideas, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up. I do end up actually moving the ideas title down to the bottom, which you will see um, later on when I take a, another break. I tend to kind of change things up when I'm not filming just to kind of, I don't know, just because I changed my mind. So here I am adding washi and then alternating my colors again for the months. And I will be adding some washi to the bottom of my ideas. And then I am just going to take my 03 and then just write the months all the way to September in all capitals. And then at the bottom, I am putting subs so that way at the end of the month, I can track how many subscribers I have. And as you can see, the ideas was moved. So now I have my next layout, which is my wants and needs on the left side and my order tracker on the right side. This came in handy in my last bullet journal 
and it also came in handy when I was in a standard so I wanted to keep this in my planner and I'm just kind of ripping up the paper just to kind of make it sure it fits and then I am going to be using my Tombow I want to say in 01 I really don't remember probably should write this down from the next time but I am just going ahead and you know setting everything up on the um, far left side of my left page is going to be all of my wants and then on the right side of that is going to be my needs and then the other side obviously is my order tracker. Okay, so after that, I am going to be highlighting every other line. I don't know how I feel about this. It looks a little weird to me. I don't know if it's because the paper on the Leuch term is more of like a yellowy tone, whereas the Archer and Olive that I'm used to was a little bit more forgiving, and I think it just kind of made my layouts look a little less ugly. I don't know, it's definitely a lot of dark colors going on in this spread, but I am just going to roll with it and maybe it will just grow on me. Other, either way, this is my bullet journal. I am definitely going to try not to be a perfectionist and not make another one because I feel like I have that tendency if something doesn't look great, I might just start all over again, which is not always a bad thing because I do like to um, make bullet journals. So, so there we go. Everything is all labeled. So going on to my next page is my final page and this is for my goals. I will be doing quarter two and quarter three on here and I will have my goals at the top and my reflections at the bottom. This one, I wanted to kind of change up the way I did my layout. I felt like I was doing too much of the same and I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of difference into it, but still incorporating the same items that I have been using in my other setups. So at first I wanted to do just the um, left side corner and the right side top corner for my um, black paper, but then I decided to be extra and add some to the other corners. So I will be having it in all four corners. At this same time too, I start to realize that I am running out of my double-sided tape, which is kind of a bummer, but I just know now that I need to buy new tape. So as you can see, I start to ration my tape and put little pieces and there you see that I have run out and I am just using the tiny bit that I have. And then when I get to that very end, I realize it's not double-sided. So then I have to go and grab my daughter's glue stick because she does do her school in my office. So I am just trying that out. I've never used glue stick in my bullet journal. Luckily, this one disappears even though it looks purple and it just it works out just fine. I'm just hoping it doesn't lift up later. So this is the end of my spread. I'm just kind of doing the last bit of touches and then we will be doing the flip through. So here is my finished spread. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I did an okay job doing a voiceover. If you guys enjoyed, let me know down below and thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys in another video. Bye.